Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, there was interest in my modification to the 3D printer to run off DC. Um, so I thought I'd go ahead and do a video on it. Now, the reason for this is about seven months of the year I'm off grid. And in the RV here, I rely on solar energy for all of my electricity. I have 200 watts of solar on the roof, and I have an additional 200 watt folding panel that I can put out when I park. Uh, and then I have a lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour battery down here in the desk that operates my equipment up here in the desk, which is um, all the stuff that I use here, my laptops, my radios, uh, tablet, cell phone, um, soldering station, oscilloscope, and other test gear. Um, for occasional use, uh, I have an inverter that's a 1,000 watt uh, consist constant and 2,000 watt peak inverter. I use it for the soldering station, the oscilloscope, power tools, my air compressor, uh, and the 3D printer. But I don't like to use the inverter. <laughs> I want to avoid it. Number one, for efficiency, uh, I modified as much stuff as possible to run directly off DC because it's far more efficient. But also, number two, I'm a ham radio operator. I like to, to work with radio, and the inverter is very noisy. Check this out. So we're looking at uh, 20 meters. I'm on an external antenna, and I'm going to turn on my inverter. There it is. It's a pure sign inverter, but that's what it does on HF. Oh, now you could hear the 2 meter radio going off too. It's got all kinds of noise. Now I'll turn off the inverter. There you go. That's the kind of noise you get from an inverter. Now, additionally, with the 3D printer, it generates noise as well. Uh, when it's operating along with the inverter, I have noise on the 2-meter band that are just that's just horrible. Uh, it wipes it out. I can't use it. <laughs> I can walk 30 yards from the RV before the noise falls off, so it's, it's really bad. So, uh, I want to convert the 3D printer to run off the DC directly. Now, internally, the 3D printer has a power supply that takes the AC mains voltage and it produces 12.5 volts DC that feed the printer electronics. So it's pretty easy. It's straightforward. 12.5 uh, volts, 13.7 volts nominal from my solar setup. It's a little over a volt difference. That's fine. That's within tolerances. The printer electronics are going to be able to handle that just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to parallel an external connector with the 12 volt bus in the printer. Uh, so that I can feed it 12 volts externally without using the power supply. Now, the power supply is still going to be in line. Uh, so, is that a problem? Probably not. Most power supplies have a solid state output section, a semiconductor output section of some type, a power MOSFET, power transistor. So, external 12 volts uh, is not going to, the power supply is not going to be a load. But that's the first thing I'm going to test to make sure before I proceed, because I don't want to damage anything. And by the way, I'm doing this modification on my equipment for my benefit. Um, I'm not recommending that other people do this. If you decide that you want to do this with your printer, you do it at your own risk. Uh, so that disclaimer out of the way. Let's get to it. Before I do the modification, I need to find out exactly how much power the printer uses when it's running off of AC through the inverter. So I'm going to do that test first. Now to do that, I'm going to use my solar charge controller to bring to gather the data. I'm going to turn off the master switch to my desk and allow the battery to become fully charged in the morning. Uh, so once the battery is drawing zero current and is fully charged, then the solar charge controller is going to indicate the load that I'm drawing on the system. As long as the voltage from the panels is higher than the battery voltage, then I know the battery is still fully charged and it's not drawing anything. So anything that's indicated here in my monitoring app, uh, as far as power and current, is going to be actual load that the printer is drawing. So I started that test. I got the printer running, doing a print job, and I monitored it for a while. Um, the average power draw throughout the print was about 130 watts. 
I saw a high around 147 watts. I saw a low uh, around 119 to 120 watts. Um, it got up to 100. Yeah, it, was, it was around 123 or so. Uh, but anyway, it averaged out around 130, maybe 131. But it, it sat around 130 watts most of the time. So now that I know how much power the printer is drawing when it's running off of AC with the inverter, I can do the modification. Here is the inside of the printer. All the electronics are over on this little board over here, the cooling fan. Um, this is the power supply. Over here we've got our mains coming in, uh, and then two wires that go to the electronics. Just two. So I should be able to just parallel a 12 volt external feed on here and not have to do anything. I could, I could run the printer off of AC or I could run it off of DC just by whichever I plug in and uh, be good to go. I'm going to test that though. I want to make sure that this power supply is not going to present a load. So I'm going to get my bench supply out. I'm going to hook it up to this output of this power supply because my bench supply is current limited. So I'll set it to a minimum current, like 200 milliamps or whatever, and it won't feed any more than that. So if this does present a load, I won't be burning anything up. So let me get my bench supply out and we'll see, uh, we'll make sure that this doesn't present a load. And if it doesn't, then we'll proceed with wiring up a connector to parallel 12 volts with its output. Okay, I've got my bench supply hooked up. I've got its current limiting all the way down. So if it sees a load, it's not going to feed much current. In fact, I'm going to short it out temporarily here just to show you. There we go. There, 260 milliamps is the maximum current that it's going to feed if it sees even a short. Watch, I'll short it again. There, 260 milliamps. It's current limited. So, if this power supply is going to present a load, uh, we will find out. Nope. No load at all. Exactly what I thought. I've got the printer's electronics unhooked right now. See this? I took the wire out, so I'm not actually powering up the printer. Okay, I uh, <laughs> drilled a hole in my 3D printer. <laughs> uh, I need to feed the wire through. This is uh, 12 gauge stranded. And on this end, I have an Anderson Power Poles, and I put long screws in it. So you can see those screws are longer, they stick right out. The reason for that is they will go through the holes in there, and I'll put nuts on the other side, and that'll mount the, that'll mount the connector right there. And I'll show you here, I got a, I'll show you when I got it in there. I got a nice little rubber grommet here for the wire feed through. This paper I put over the board while I was drilling the holes so any metal shavings would fall out and not fall on the board. You don't want metal shavings on your electronics. Okay, let me get this installed and I'll show you the result. Okay, there we go. We've got our input connector. Wire goes through. It comes out here. It's tied there. And the power supply had multiple terminals for positive and negative, which was convenient. So I just tied it into adjacent terminals for the positive and the negative right there. And we are done. We have paralleled in an external 12 volt connector. We should be able to run the printer off external 12 volts. I installed an Anderson power poles tap for my main battery. The power poles uh, that I'm using are rated at 30 amps maximum. So I fused it with an inline automotive fuse at the battery of 25 amps. I always like to engineer a little bit of a safety margin in my projects. For the DC test, as before, I rely on the solar charge controller to feed me data, so I waited until the battery was completely charged and not drawing any current, and I switched off my main switch to the desk. So now the printer will be the only thing drawing power from the system, and we can test it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to plug in the printer. What's that? What's that, Kevin? What are you doing there? I'll show you. This tucks in here, like that, and that takes the weight off of the connector. I know it's a little how you doing, but it'll work for now until I can 3D print something that clips these together. Okay, here we go. Powering it up on 12 volts. It works! Okay, time to start a print and gather some data. 
Here we go. Printing directly off 12 volts. The print is about one-third done. The printer is running absolutely normally. No issues at all running directly off the DC from the solar. And the data is looking really, really, really good. We've got quite a savings doing it this way. And it's RF quiet now. It's not obliterating my amateur radio gear with noise from that switching power supply. So this is a win. I'm happy. And here are the results. So, when the printer was running off of AC power using the inverter, it drew an average of 130 watts. And when it was running uh, directly off the DC power, no inverter, it only drew 90 watts. And that gives us a power savings of 30.77%. That's quite a gain in efficiency for uh, not using the inverter. By the way, I think I mentioned that the uh, printer is RF quiet now. Let me show you uh, the difference. This is with the printer running off of the inverter and it's AC power supply. We're doing a solid S8 noise. I have a little noise out here anyway. Let me go and switch both the inverter and the printer off and we'll get a baseline. And here is our baseline with no inverter and no 3D printer running. And so yeah, we're peeking around S3, sitting around, averaging around S2 noise. All this was done on an external antenna, my Slim Jim, which is up on top of the RV. And this is the printer running on DC. No inverter. Um, you can see there's a big difference. That's about peaking around S4, averaging around S3. So hardly any more noise at all when it's, uh, when it's running off of DC. Wonderful. And with the 3D printer running, since I don't need the inverter, I can actually use HF. Little tiny bit of noise there on 20 meters, but it's not bad. Well, that's a big improvement, isn't it? 90 watts average instead of 130 watts, uh, almost a third uh, reduction in power use. Uh, that's that's definitely a win. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the result here. So there you go. Um, now I can run my printer directly off of the DC uh, supply from my solar setup and uh, use less power. So that's, uh, that's gonna be great this winter when I'm off grid. I hope you found that interesting and I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.